I'm Greg Hunter. Welcome to USAWatchdog.com. With us a real treat, a quick turnaround for a guest. It's pretty hard for me to usually get because he's so busy, uh, but he wanted to come on with this. It's the 2024 Outlook. It's Martin Armstrong, and I'm telling you, he's titling it The Year from Hell? Question mark. And if you read this report and you go through it, there's a lot of variables that are not looking like things are going to go real smooth. It's Martin Armstrong, of course. Martin Armstrong, a world-renowned geopolitical and financial cycle expert with his, uh, I guess, world-renowned computer program, Socrates. Um, uh, Martin Armstrong, thanks for joining us today on USAWatchdog.com. Well, thank you for inviting me, Craig. It's always a pleasure. Listen, I saw this report and I thought this is fantastic. Well, you, the last time you were on, you said that uh, you were running uh, the scenarios with Biden and Trump and that most of the scenarios have Trump winning by a landslide. Do you still stand by that? Well, I mean, it depends if, if they rig the election. Uh, I mean, you even had Alex Soros put out a a veiled threat of assassinating Trump. I mean, um, they are doing everything they possibly can to make sure he is shut down. Uh, the computer shows that he he would win. And, and honestly, I've never seen the projections uh, this drastic. Uh, but it was like, you know, over 60 percent to, you know, Biden coming in around, you know, in the th in low 30s. Um, I mean, we have a, a real serious problem here going on. I mean, Trump is against basically the climate change. He's against war um, and he's against the CBDCs, which is you know, basically the entire leftist agenda to take over, you know, control of everything. Uh, so I. I don't know. I think it's going to be very, very interesting. But um, from the, the the rumor out there, which I do give some credence to, is that the Democratic convention is um, <clears throat> August, I think, 19th to 22nd or something. And um, what they're going to do is... Biden will suddenly give all these people citizenship so they can vote. And we're talking about over six million. And um, <clears throat> can, he do, can he do that? Can he unilaterally just grant people citizenship? That will be a uh, probably an issue that ends up in the Supreme Court. But he'll use an executive order to do it. Uh, can he? I mean, probably. Uh, they probably would uphold it. And the idea is that he would do that. But at the convention, because that would be so unpopular, um, he'll step down. And even this, this uh, you know, I would think that they put in, the one they're really talking about the most is Michelle Obama. Um, I mean, Hillary's up in arms and she's yelling back and forth behind the curtain, too. But um, uh, <clears throat> look, the stage seems to have been set. This special prosecutor's report calling him um, mentally incompetent to stand trial. Uh, that's not a fluke. And, and it's not. Um, something that you would normally expect. It's certainly not an excuse um, not to charge him. But um, it seems as though that was deliberately done to set the stage for him to um, grant all these people citizenship, step down. He, you know, then Michelle Obama is drafted in and she didn't do this. So, you know, maybe some veiled things. Oh, well, you know, vote for me and I'll make sure things are, change, you know, straightened out or whatever. Uh, and <clears throat> I mean, that's what you're looking at. They f they think that she can be Trump. Wow. Uh, and and the, uh, wait, hold on. These are your sources are saying to you behind the scenes. Yeah. They think Michelle Maybell can destroy the trumpet. That's what they think. Look, this is. I don't agree with that, but, you know, 
they are so deep into this woke agenda. Um, and, you know, she checks all the boxes. I mean, she's she's black. She's a woman. Uh, I mean, that that's like gives some, uh, some people will say she's a tranny, that she's a he. Yeah. I, Probably. I don't know. I mean, who knows? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> all I can say is they do know that a lot of people don't like Hillary. Uh, and she is is making some noise behind the curtain, you know, like, hey, you know, what's going on here? And she's even come out publicly and said that uh, Biden's mental capacity is is an issue. So if you pay attention to little words like that, that's showing you there is also, you know, for her to come out and say that publicly is showing there is tension behind the curtain. That's Hillary. Yep. Well, if he, uh, I don't mean to spar with you or uh, to uh, debate you or uh, question, you know, your uh, data, but I will say, so if he's cuckoo, if he's cannot, he's not mentally able to stand trial, how can he create an executive order that will allow six million people to vote, you know, boom, just like that, if he's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? Uh, then you have to take it up to the Supreme Court. People have to understand, this is unfortunately the way our government is set up. They could do whatever they want to you. It's your obligation to take them to court to say, hey, they can't do this. All right. Um, you know, but look, they execute uh, innocent people. They charge innocent people all the time. I mean, people don't realize we have more people in prison than <clears throat> than even China. We, you have a hot, you have actually five hundred percent greater chance of going to prison in the United States than you do in China. Boy. Uh, and, and they ha and they have one point five billion people. We still have more people in prison than they do. So I mean, this is standard. So this, this quote here that you have, which is uh, the year from political hair, hell, can you give us an overview of why this you're questioning whether this is the, the year from political hell? Uh, yeah, I mean, people have to realize that this is not just the United States election. I mean, that's what you hear on the news all the time, you know, locally. However... You step outside this country. Uh, Indonesia just had an authoritarian, you know, uh, over, you know, basically a leftist government just voted in. You have the EU going for election. You have May 2nd. You have all the local elections in Britain. You have Russian elections in May 7th. I mean, 60 percent of the world is going to the to the polls to vote for a new government. And. It's like take, you might as well take them all, throw them in, into a tumbler, shake well, and see what comes out. I mean, it's all over the place. Um, you have Brazil, which is <clears throat> on the verge of a civil war. They, they've asked Bolsonaro to basically turn over his passport. They want to put him in prison because they thought, well, okay, fine. Biden's doing that to Trump. We should do that to, down here. Um and it's almost the same scenario. They're saying, oh, well, he was behind a bunch of people that stormed the parliament down there to overthrow the government. It's almost exactly the same. Wow. Uh, and, I mean, Argentina just overthrew, you know, a communist regime that's been there for, for how long? Who knows? You know, what, over 60 years or so? Uh, and <clears throat> his speech... The new president of Argentina spoke at, at um, Davos, and I do recommend you listen to it. Uh, he was basically there, and he says, I'm here to warn the West, do not do what Argentina did, and you're going in the wrong direction. But, of course, they're not going to listen. Um, you know, wars and things of this nature are created by the elite. They're not created by the average person on the street. And um, <clears throat> I think even the uh, the longest living veteran from World War One, um, with all the people that died, 
uh, and more civilians always die in war than actual soldiers. And they don't like to t tell you about that, but it's always true. And um, he said we should have just taken all the leaders, throw them in a room, give them a gun, and let them settle it and just save 45 million people. You know? um, but this is what they do. It, it, we're like pieces on a, check, you know, on a chessboard to them. Uh, they really have no uh, respect for human life or anything else. I mean, just look at Ukraine. You have nearly a million people have been killed. Over what? Basically, oh, well, you know, it's, uh, it's Putin invading Ukraine. No, sorry. You know, the Donbass is, <coughs> is occupied by Russians. All right. It's Zelensky who is basically just following the orders of the neocons. And <clears throat> he outlaws their religion. I mean, this is like saying, OK, fine. Uh, to me, it's more like France taking, the, you know, overthrowing the Vatican and taking the pope and making him a French pope. You know, uh, this is the same thing. You cannot no longer um, <clears throat> be under the, the, the guide of of the patriarch, which is kind of like the orthodox pope, per, per se, in Moscow. And he sets up his own in, in, in Kiev. And orthodox Christian, basically, their Christmas is, is what we call, you know, the little Christmas, you know, in January. He's changed that. He says, no, we're going to adopt the, the Christmas from, from the West, December 25th. He's outlawed their language. Look, you know, all these people want to be pro-Ukraine. You better take a look at what he's doing. Because if Canada stood up and said, we're going to outlaw French, I think you're going to have a civil war there too. Or could the United States stand up and say, we're going to outlaw Spanish? You can't outdo these things. And they're done deliberately to create war. Wow. And, and Estonia is doing the same thing. Oh, we're going to outlaw Russian. How can you... Tell people, you know, it's illegal for you to speak your natural tongue. Uh, so you know, I, you're talking about just, war. Is the war cycle? We've got this Hezbollah blowing uh, up stuff in Israel, returning fire, and civilians are dying, as you said. Uh, Gaza, they're going to create a space for 100,000 Palestinians in the uh, Sinai Desert, according to Egypt. They're, they're building something now. They're ready for more war there. The Yemen, Yemeni, they're not stopping uh, with the blowing up of ships uh, going into the Red Sea. You have, uh, you know, all the uh, violence going on in Syria. Uh, are we headed for a, uh, well, the Armageddon, as it says in the Bible? Are we headed for a the, the war that will end all wars, as they said about World War One. But this time it may really end all wars and maybe all life on Earth, too. Are we headed for the big war? Yes. I, look, you, you <clears throat> have left out a new little tension that's building up. Uh, Venezuela is sending its troops to the border of, of Guyana. Um, you know, you're likely to see a invasion there too, and let's get let's just start getting South America thrown in too. Um, it, look, what you just mentioned about <clears throat> um, Hamas. And the Houthis, etc., they're all proxies of Iran. All right. Um, and for those that aren't real familiar with maybe the Middle East, uh, Iran is, is Shiite. All right. And that means to them, that version of, of their religion is like the priest should be in charge of it. All right. <clears throat> then you have like Saudi Arabia, which are Sunni. All right, Saudi Arabia is a kingdom, all right? So separation between church and state. And <clears throat> so Iran has basically hated, uh, really, it's hated even Saudi Arabia and was, has wanted to overthrow it for, for decades. Uh, plus then you have, you know, the Jews. So, you know, my sources were saying that at least 40% of the so-called Palestinian Hamas that invaded were not even Palestinians. You know, they're, they're anti-Jewish from all these other areas that are all coming in. Uh, it's, 
you know, it, this is so what you have. About, it's you're just talking about Hamas. Mess. I'm sorry. I'm going to back up just a minute. I need to make sure I understand this. You're talking about the October 7th uh, attack was 40 percent non-Palestinian, non-Hamas. Correct. Um, well, that's a piece why of do news. you think that they could care less if they were killing Palestinian civilians? Good. The more, the better. I hate to tell you, but Zelensky did the same thing. Go to the Washington Post. <clears throat> they interviewed Zelensky. They realized that he knew Russia was going to invade. And they asked him, why did you not warn your people? And the Washington Post reported his response. He said, if I told them, I would have lost $7 billion in money. It would have sent off a panic and people would have moved their money out of the country. So it's better, you know, look, they wanted civilians to be killed so they can blame, you know, oh, look at this. Russia is horrible. It's exactly the same thing you're seeing in, in Palestine. Please kill as many Palestinians as you can so we get everybody on our side. Uh, this is part of the standard operational procedures behind war. I mean, they don't do not care about the people. I don't think any side. All right. All the evidence you can Google. All right. It's on. It's in Wikipedia. It, it, uh, you know, nor would the they basically declassified a document where the CIA went to JFK and said, listen, if we kill some Americans, we can blame it on Cuba to justify an invasion. JFK turned it down. All right, that's on Google. I mean, Johnson, the tapes are out on Vietnam. They never attacked us. He even said, he said, well, for all I know, they were shooting at whales that night. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> weapons of mass destruction. Just go down the list. Yeah, yeah. So you're I saying mean, that the, uh, the Palestinians, the Palestine that is in Israel, they killed Palestinians because they wanted to garner sympathy. Look, it's part of a war strategy. You do. Uh, <laughs> and everyone has done this. It's both sides. All right. They kill their oh, own people. You're, you're, you're talking civilians. Hamas, not the, not the Jews, not Israel. You're talking Hamas killed their own Palestinian people to get more sympathy. Well, they... I'm not saying that they did it directly, but they put them in a line of fire so they can. Uh, I've been saying that. I, they conduct war operations in highly uh, densely operated civilian areas, and the other side cannot acknowledge that. That is a stated uh, operational uh, procedure by Hamas, by Hezbollah. I mean, it's like the IDF bringing their women and children and gathering them around them and saying, okay, let's go to war. I mean, this is what they do. Anyway, but you're saying they do this for a reason. Everybody is doing it. Everybody's killing, their, everybody's killing their own civilians to garner sympathy, including the United yeah. States. Yeah, look, the, the, I don't know any country that has not. <laughs> it's You really investigate. Look, Google, um, you know, basically uh, the Lusitania, all right? Germany put out an ad, do not sail on the Lusitania, they're using it to sneak weapons over. U.S. denied it. I think it was 1987 or whatever, some divers finally found it, and the U.S. said, well, be very careful because there are explosives in there. And now they, you know, they did go down and they found, guess what? Germany was telling the truth. There were arms in the Lusitania. They were using a, a, a you know, passenger ship to hide uh, arms that they said they were not supplying to Britain. I, I mean, I don't care what what administration you look at, what country you look at. This is standard operational procedures. To kill their and it's own. Not, to kill it's their own not people. unique. Anyway. To kill their own people. Yeah, they always do. They always do. Um, like I said, just you know. Um, you can Google Project Northwoods, where they actually proposed to JFK to kill Americans so they could justify it, blame it on Cuba to, to warrant an invasion, and he said no. The documents are there. These, these things have been declassified. Um, 
So it's not wow. unique to Hamas. I mean, this is, you know, if, if you just look at it, you'll find it everywhere. Uh, 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 uh. Even Saddam Hussein, they said, oh, well, <clears throat> he was hiding his weapons of mass destruction in civilian areas. <laughs> um you know, it, it takes a kettle to call the other one black, you know? <laughs> uh, do, so how bad will it get? I mean, we're going to get metal on metal contact, uh, you know, full on uh, global war with the nukes flying. Is that is that what Socrates is that what you're projecting? Are we going to get, you know, a huge, debilitating, very destructive and even right here in America war? Yeah, I mean, there will be nuclear weapons. Um, I can tell you that the neocons keep telling all these people on Capitol Hill, oh, Russia would never use a nuke because they know we would use them back. And that is nonsense. If you are actually about ready to conquer somebody and this is all they got left, they're pushing the button. I mean, you can't do this. I mean... Uh, look, I mean, these people, in, in my opinion, um, they got their backs up when Khrushchev was of the days, we will bury you. It was almost like a religious cult. Yeah, they were going to spread the mock, you know, they were going to spread communism to the entire world. And so the neocons said, oh, really? Well, we're going to spread democracy to the world. And when communism fell, they didn't stop. I mean... Uh, just look at everything. I mean, you, you have uh, Obama wanted to go into Syria. Oh, he's gassing his own people. I had, that was total BS. All right. It was all about a pipeline from Qatar through <clears throat> through there to re, to uh, replace Russia. They've been trying to, to cut off Russia uh, energy sales to Europe from the very beginning. When they start building the pipeline, the U.S. put sanctions on any German company engaged. They still went through with it. All right. Uh, um, <clears throat> you take uh, everything that's going on. It, it, it's just, uh, you know, it's these people, all they want is war. Um, and, it, you know, they don't care. They really do not care. Uh, they don't care about the economy. They don't care about anything. Uh, and you have to understand, <clears throat> uh, what's the biggest problem with Obama? I mean, with uh, Biden. And <laughs> I think is, you got it right the first time. <laughs> <laughs> um, there, You have a cabinet meeting. At this cabinet meeting, you have the heads of all these agencies. And <clears throat> the president is supposed to run interference. He's the referee, all right? Biden's on vacation 40% of the time, and he's not there the rest of it, all right? Um, so the problem we have are all these agencies are doing whatever they want to do themselves. And there's, there, this is why what's so disastrous here. Uh, you have the State Department fully in control by the neocons, I mean, you got you know, you have Victoria Newland is number two there in charge. Um, her sister-in-law is the one that runs the propaganda organization Institute for the Study of War. All these uh, articles, if you look in the um, various different newspapers, oh, Russia's losing, whatever. Look at their source; it's all Victoria Newland's sister-in-law. All right, and. <clears throat> They are, you know, they bash China, all right, over Taiwan. Oh, we're going to go there. We're going to defend. We're going to defeat you. All right, China's the number one holder of U.S. debt. All right, they've been starting to selling some stuff off. And these people are complete idiots. If China no longer buys our debt, guess what? All right, interest rates go up. The long-term rates will rise because that's how a government defaults when they issue new debt and there is nobody buying it then you can't issue the new debt to pay off the old all right but these people are idiots they do not look at the whole this is what the president is supposed to do 
run referee between them and say, hey, listen, you can't do that because the Treasury is going to say, hey, you do that and our rates are going up. You- this, this is why you had Powell. And as you know, I mean, I've advised a lot of central banks over my throughout my career. Yes, you have. It's a um, uh, look. It's a it's a club, all right. And back in the you know in the nineties, I it came out with the Asian currency crisis, I, and that was nineteen ninety seven. The capital flow shifted. I said, okay, fine. We're going to get a crash over here. The money's going to move back over here. Why? To get into the euro, which was coming in 1998. All right. So, okay, fine. We correctly called the the 97 currency crisis. Then I was invited by the Central Bank of China. It was probably the first Western uh, analyst ever, you know, be even asked maybe i don't know if they ever asked anybody ever again after me but um i went there and they said look you're doing a great job this is absolutely correct the capital flow shifted uh we can see what you're saying you're you're spot on and i said well why don't you come out and support me they said oh we can't do that so what's the problem they already knew back in 1997 and so we cannot criticize another central bank, and they cannot criticize their government. So you'll see none of these central banks criticize each other or their host governments. Now, in December, at the beginning of December, <clears throat> Powell came out and he said, and you can look it up in the, in the Wall Street Journal. He came out and said, <clears throat> the spending is unsustainable. This is the first time a central bank has criticized its own government since 1951. This is showing you the pressure that is building up here. All right. Um, You then had Jamie Dimon come out, went over just about everybody's head. But at, at Davos, he said Trump was right. He was right about the border. He was right about China. And he was right about NATO, which really shocked me because he wanted to get out of NATO. Uh, but he actually said that. Then he came out and he, he warned, he said, there is going to be a rebellion against government debt. All right. <clears throat> I'm telling you what is happening here. And, you know, people, that a lot of a these comments against- go over people's heads. Hold on a minute. I want you to explain that so people get this, because I don't know what, exactly what it means. A rebellion against government debt. In other words, people are just going to stop buying the Treasury bond, stop buying the euro, stop buying the guilt. And yet we don't want it. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. When you have the neocons threatening China over Taiwan, and they're the number one buyer of debt. Hello? I mean, do you realize what you're really doing here? Um, these people are only focused on their own agenda. That's it. They don't care about the economy. They don't even understand it. All right. Then you have like the, the environmental people. Oh, we're going to outlaw all gas stoves and let's shut down all the all the farmers. OK, yeah. Why don't we do that? All right. So maybe maybe we can starve half the population out and then you have your CO2 reduction. Isn't that great? You know, I mean. I don't know. I mean, there's nobody there running. We cannot afford another 90 days of Biden. Uh, this is uh, one of the things in your in your 2024. Incidentally, we're not going to get to all of this. This is a very deep uh, report, just so I know people. This is what I'm going off of here. Uh, the year of political era. There's a lot in it. And I want to get to one thing because you just brought up that uh, interest rates. And you can buy this on uh, ArmstrongEconomics.com, this report. Is that yes. right? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you for coming on and giving a nice deep preview. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is what I wanted to get to. It says this. So you're talking that interest rates you think are going up. This is how governments default. Number one, is America going to default? Oh, eventually, yes. I mean, this is <clears throat> this is why they need war. This is why you keep pushing for, for all you know for war because. Honestly, they will default 
on everybody that owns debt who is an enemy. So they won't pay China. Uh, they'll just default on it. Um, I mean, you can go on eBay and buy all the, the bonds from the 1930s they defaulted on. I mean, that's what really made the Great Depression. Um, 1840, you can buy bonds from there, too. You know, when uh, <clears throat> basically they, you know, you had <clears throat> Andrew Jackson shut down the Bank of the United States. And what did he do? He Then they would be, you know, you had all the... <clears throat> People going to state banks and they were issuing their own money and you can collect them. I mean, they're all available, all different banks are called broken bank notes. There's catalogs on them. I mean, hundreds of banks issued their own money because you took down the central bank. Uh, you um, know, Catherine Austin Fitz was on recently talking about uh, gold and silver depositories and, and doing business in dollars and having the states uh, take this up uh, in terms of uh, sovereign banks. I mean, I exactly understand all of it but in other words the federal system was is like is looking like it's going to crash and you got to have a way to do commerce what you're talking about so evidently you're, she's in agreement with you basically broadly I, I, but anyway I, it says here in your report and i got to ask this question and this is a statement not a question like the uh, year from political herald question mark this is in your report it says the coming crash of 2024 we are headed for a crash explain a detail uh, basically, we're looking at a, a serious problem with um, on the debt side. All right, because this is all coming to a head. All right, you're you're going to get an a initial decline in the share market, but these people that keep saying, "Oh, you're going to get a great crash," in like is 1920. I mean, they have no idea what they're talking about. Uh, okay, fine. Sell all your stocks. And the flight to quality is what? You buy bonds? I don't think that's going to happen. This is why right? the market's going up. This is why the exactly. market market's going up because everybody's like, eh, oh, we're back to the uh, the rebellion against government debt. Oh, correct. The, oh, he, water. Helen Keller. This is why the markets go up. Oh, brilliant in, in its simplicity, uh, Martin Armstrong. And I, I don't mean that to give you a hard time. It's hard to break stuff down to be brilliant, right? I mean, brilliant. Uh, so the stock market's going up because government debt is no. It, uh, no, 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 we don't want this. That's what you're saying. Plus, you have wars developing. What made the United States the financial capital of the world uh, was the fact that we were bankrupt in 1896. That's when J.P. Morgan had to lend $100 million in gold to bail out the Treasury. Um, but by the end of World War I, we had supplanted Britain. By the end of World War II, we had 76% of the world gold reserves. All right. <clears throat> As Europe was running around blowing itself up, all right, <clears throat> all the money came here. All right, that's what made 1929. People don't understand that. 1929 was because all the capital had concentrated here. And then they saw all the automobile boom. And it was kind of like the dot-com bubble or the AI bubble. All right. Uh, they were all here. Hey, look at this. America's, you know, the leader in, in industrial revolution. And they all participated. But the money came here first because of World War I. So, All right. what's, so what's going to happen in 2024? What is, how is the crash going to unfold? What should people be looking for? Well, we're probably looking at what we call a false move. All right, it's like taking a spring, push it, compress it down, take your hand off, and watch it pop. All right, we're most likely going to see a a a, a mild decline in the stock market. Because you have all these, you know, these jockeys running around. They've been calling for a crash for the last two years and a recession, etc. Our model shows that yes, we're heading into a recession finally, but after May seventh, all right, into twenty twenty eight. So economic growth will decline, but inflation is going to rise. Um, then we we show very strong. Um, <clears throat> High volatility, particularly centered around September, and it's running through almost just about all the markets. All right. You have a, a key period coming up here near term 
which is going to be May. All right. In fact, we're having a, a conference in in London to you know to basically outline the whole thing from the turn of what's going to happen from May on. Um, so we're handling most of our um, <clears throat> institutional clients uh, there. Uh, I think that's at the end of May. Um, I have to go over there. Um, before then, I, I got to run down to uh, Argentina. All right. Then they want to do a big uh, promotion down there. They want me there for that. Um, I mean, the world is going crazy. All right. It's going crazy. So what's going to happen this fall? Before. So you're going to lay this out in May. Are you going to have video streaming? You're going to have streaming? Yes. Fine. You, uh, please tell me and we'll, I'll make sure I promote that. You can come back on just before you go over there. But so what's going to happen in the fall? What are you broadly? What's going to happen it, in the fall? It, it, we're looking at probably a, a sharp rise in civil unrest uh, after the 2024 election going, particularly into the first quarter, 25. Uh, we're looking at war coming at that stage in the game. That I And I will put this out there that our computer is showing very high volatility starting in July. And the rumor basically going around is that these people are desperate to create some sort of a false flag or a war going. Um, and maybe by as early as July. Um, they actually think that if they can create a war that um, no president has ever lost. Uh, and this is this is all the neocons doing this. Um, I mean, it, it's if Trump gets back in power, they're all fired. He fired everybody from John Bolton on the way down. Victoria Newland's been in every administration except for Trump's. So <clears throat> you had her husband, Kagan, He's the one that wrote the the op-ed for the Washington Post calling, oh, Trump's going to be a dictator. Why? Because basically it's going to throw out all the neocons. <laughs> uh, so he's just supporting his wife. Um, so we're looking at most likely a correction uh, first, then people are going to look around, well, what do I buy? I mean, it will be a buying opportunity because you're not going <clears> to, <throat> you got CBDCs coming. Uh, and I can tell you about that one real quick. Um, it, the Federal Reserve will not issue a CBDC. Uh, what they're doing is, is that the top five banks are all secretly um, developing their own. Uh, you even have um, them trying to, to, one of these guys, uh, BlackRock, I think it is, is trying to take over Bitcoin to convert that. And the reason they're doing this is <clears throat> because of the Constitution. Um, with COVID, it was a planned deal that they had. The, the First Amendment, if you read it, it says, the government shall not pass a law. All right? So, <clears throat> Facebook can, YouTube can, whatever. Hey, we're, we're not the government. So now you're, you're finding out that the government was telling them who to censor, who to do, what to, etc. Because you actually don't have a right to free speech. That's a misnomer. The First Amendment says the government shall not. It doesn't talk about Facebook or anybody else. All right. So they've been using that. And by taking the CBDCs and making, <clears throat> allowing the banks to issue them, all right, regulated by the Fed, all right, they can then do whatever they want to you. They can debank you. They can say they already have the rules in there and <clears throat> say, oh, you just deposited something that looks strange. They're supposed to file suspicious reports, uh, activity reports already. So they will be able to police everybody. The government can't. So it's going to be the same model as COVID. <clears throat> the private sector restricted your free speech. It will be the private sector again that does go through and says, hey, take a look at this guy. This guy looks kind of strange to us. That's fine. 
Nobody's rights are violated. The government can come in and bust down your doors, and that's it. They have probable cause because somebody told them. So the so t- tell me about uh, Bob Nardelli, the former CEO of Chrysler and um, Home Depot, was on Fox saying, we're going to have huge unemployment. We're going to have a big dislocation in the economy. Wow, he's saying what you're saying. Explain that. What, what is is that we're going to have? Give us paint us a picture of what is this going to look like in September, October, uh, November of this year. What is it going to look like? Um, <clears throat> what these people don't grasp is that once you, the average person, begins to see that we are actually heading into war that these people are trying to create, that's uncertainty. And as soon as the the general consumer thinks the future is uncertain, guess what? They spend less and they start to save. The same thing if they think their house value declines, which is what made the mortgage-backed security issue such a critical one, because if that if their home has increased 50%, It's not cash on the table, but they spend more because they feel that they are rich. But if the house value declines by 50%, they don't spend as much and they save. Uh, So that's what creates the recession. All right. And what we're looking at is a contraction in spending um, because of uncertainty. And that's what these neocons are really creating. They don't want to listen to anybody. Uh, It's just their agenda, and they don't care what happens to the country. How big is the contraction? We're probably looking at an area of 12 to maybe 18 percent. But, I mean, so GDP is not going to be rising, but you're going to find uh, inflation still rising because it's going to be more stagflation. Um, Because there's going to be, you're looking at increased costs because of war. And, you know, we're still dealing with shortages. And, you know, the Sheriff's Association, this is not in your paper, but I know you have probably said, because you said this before. You said, listen, the border's wide open. Exactly what you said, but this is about what you said. The border's wide open. They want terrorism. Christopher Ray was on talking about terrorism and warning about it. And there's lots of blinking lights going off or whatever the heck he said. The Sheriff's Association just had their winter winter, uh, meeting and out slips. There's been two million terrorists that have come across the border. Christopher Ray was there doing one on ones with sheriffs saying uh, that this is going to be bad, basically. And tell us about the invasion of the southern border. What's the real story about the invasion? They want terrorism. They want violence. Violence. Is that right? Why? Because that will be the excuse to lock us down. All right. Um, That you need papers, digital IDs. Everybody's going to have to have a digital ID. Oh, there's so many terrorists. Everybody's going to have to give give your fingerprints. your retina, and we everybody's going to need a digital ID to even move down the street. All right. <clears throat> just look at the law that they just passed as of January 1st. If you're a small business, all right, you have to report everything, but you have to also say where you live. If I change my residence, according to the new act, I must tell the government I am moving. All right. This is East Germany. You were not allowed to move from one building to another without permission of the government. This is the same thing. Um, they know they're losing power. So as they, they, instead of reforming and doing the right thing, they clamp down and they want, you know, they think that they can survive and retain power by oppressing us even more. And sorry, but that's what creates revolution. Wow. Whew. So, whew. so we're, I, you, we have a highly leveraged economy, as you know. I mean, they're talking about just the commercial real estate market is um, reported on Bloomberg. I mean, they, BlackRock sold a building at 50% off. You know, some other building in L.A. went off for 45% off 10 years ago. That was sold for 10 years ago. Uh, and uh, we're talking about 1.2 trillion. I think the entire 
you know, subprime mortgages was a little less than 24%. That was $600 billion. We're talking officially $1.2 trillion in crap debt uh, losses. Uh, we could have, could we have a big giant meltdown? Yeah, I mean, that's because of COVID. Uh, and that was all for the climate change. That's what I'm talking I mean, about. In 2024, about. can we have a meltdown? In the commercial side of real estate, yes. Because COVID, the objective of COVID to create um, zero CO2 was to end people from commuting. That's why these office buildings are, you know, going for, you know, 50 cents on the dollar. All right. People are now working home virtually. They succeeded in that. Nobody ever considered what would happen if you actually pulled that off. Now we have a commercial real estate problem, you know, and it's far worse than than anyone suspects because, you know, that commercial real estate problem is the bulk of major cities. So then they lose tax revenue. All right. As they lose tax revenue, they keep increasing it on on the residents. All right. Uh, This is why you see real estate. Basically, I mean, California's got nearly a half a trillion debt. All right. And I mean, you have people there living. I don't know if they smoke too much weed or what, but. You know, you have politicians there actually just saying, oh, we should raise the the minimum wage to $50 an hour. I mean, it's like, excuse me? You know, oh, so do these people can afford to live. All right, fine. If you do that, then you increase the cost of everything and you're going to be right back to where you were. But, uh, you know, they don't understand anything about, honestly, about government, the economy, nothing. And these people are the ones that make these decisions. And COVID was just, it, it set in motion the, the commercial real estate crisis that we have. And that's brewing. And so what should the honest, the uh, people like me when I ask this question, because I'm just, a, my dad was a machinist. I'm just a, you know, a blue collar guy, right? What, uh, what should people do? I know central banks are buying gold like crazy. Uh, there have been some gold experts saying they are buying it. You're just going to be no investment gold out there for people um, uh, in the future because central banks are just gobbling it up. What should common people do? Buy food, buy water, get out of the cities? I mean, what should they do? Well, I think you definitely want to be away from the cities. You also have a mass migration from the blue states to the red states. Um, uh, and <clears throat> is the you know the people who are telling you the central banks are buying gold? They're you know that's just self interest. All right. What you have to understand is why has China and Russia been doing that? It's because of the sanctions that the U.S. put in on Russia. All right, they took them out of SWIFT. And so you've divided the world economy. So <clears throat> China realizes now you have all these neocons threatening them. All right, so are you going to buy more debt? No, the only th- neutral thing that they can buy is gold. So would you That's tell it. people to buy gold? Yes, I mean... Um, I think, honestly, when they do the CBDCs, you may find it uh, impossible to actually buy uh, gold at that point. Um, They're making these things programmable. And I'm telling you, the whole object of CBDCs, the object of, of, of digital IDs, is basically to control everything. All right, and... Uh, this is the way they're going. This has been what I've been on the opposite you know, side of the table from Schwab. He's telling them to, to do this and, and basically default. Uh, and I'm saying, look, you know, government shouldn't be borrowing. And that's what's going to bring down the whole um, the whole everything on, on top of us. Uh, they are a prefer Schwab's. You know, solutions because Schwab Klaus, gives Klaus them more Schwab. power. You're talking Klaus Schwab. 
Class you know, you'll you yes. eat bugs and you will own nothing and be happy. Him, you know, the World Economic Forum. Yeah. Just so you, you can't know. even put the chocolate on the bug. So, <laughs> so um, would cash is cash U.S. Federal Reserve notes? Would that work well for a while? Should some people have like Fannie Willis who had cash? I don't have a checking account. Uh, the, the the prosecutor in uh, Georgia who's testing cash payments uh, to her lover so, allegedly. Uh, I, anyway, would is cash something good for common people to have? Very short term. What they will do is the way Europe does it. Um, Europe routinely cancels the currency. If you've got a, a 10 pound British note from 20 years ago, it's, it's worthless. You have to take it to the central bank. They'll redeem it. All right. <clears throat> but if you had 100,000 in cash and you kept it in your safety deposit box, they call that money laundering anyhow. But you then take that because they're canceling the currency. You take it down. And you say, okay, fine. Here, I want to deposit it uh, before it's, you know. And then what are they going to say? They're gonna, oh, where did you get this? Did you pay taxes? This is how Europe does it. They routinely cancel the currency to prevent people from hoarding uh, cash. And you um, think that's coming to America, even though we've never canceled our debt. Our, our, our enemy, even today, most of the $100 bills are held outside the country. I know you know that. But it's because we, the United States, and you've brought this up, has never canceled its debt. If you have a bill from 1901, it's still a, a good bill. It might have numismatic value. But, you, um, but you're saying this is the, that's going to change. The U.S. is, at some point, going to cancel its Federal Reserve notes, and you're going to have to turn them in. Yes, that's what their um, whole agenda is behind this CBDC stuff, is to eliminate cash. All right. Why? Because I've been told straight out, flat right, eliminating cash, <clears throat> they expect to collect 35% more in taxes minimum. Um, these people cannot sleep at night worrying that, like I said, you hired that 16-year-old girl next door to watch the kids while you and your wife went out. Oh, my God, you gave her $20? Where's her taxes? You know, they, you know, you handed somebody a $20 bill at a, at a parking, you know, at, at a traffic light because they had a sign that said, I'm homeless. Could you help? We're, they want to eliminate all that. Uh, and basically, you know, you see somebody you're going to have to say, do you take a visa? You know, what are you going to do? How, how close uh, are we to that? How close are we to that? Probably. I mean, they were looking to do it um, initially this summer, but I think they're probably looking to do it maybe off into the first quarter of or second quarter of 25. But if they really fear Trump winning uh, and we're going to have to see what happens with the Democratic convention, if they end up nominating somebody else or what, um, then they may go ahead and push that through ahead of the elections um, to eliminate, you know, again, using executive orders. Uh, it was an executive order that FDR did to confiscate gold. Uh, yes. And that, thus the question the year from political hell. I mean, you're talking about some crazy moves, of, you know, legalizing millions of illegal aliens to vote, uh, ch stripping uh, uh, people of their own currency, uh, war. Uh, I, this is unlike anything. This is like a cartoon, Martin Armstrong. I know. Look, you know, <clears throat> look, I've told you before, I had the mandate from um, Hong Kong. They knew I knew the Australian government to negotiate to try and buy land from them to move back in 99, uh, 1998, when it was going to be handed back to China. I met with the um, former Prime Minister Paul Keating, and I could not negotiate anything. Tried to buy an island, no. Then I finally said, okay, fine, let us take some land here in, in the upper left-hand corner of Australia. No, no, no. And I looked at him, and I, I, I didn't know what. I said, I got a blank check here. I can pay off your national debt. I thought it was racist. I said, is that is that what the issue is here? You don't like Chinese? Um, and he said, no. He That's when the first time I encountered this, he said, 
they are fleeing <clears throat> communism. Therefore, if we let them in, they will vote conservative. And uh, he was a labor government. Uh, basically and communist. They would not allow them in. I could have paid off their national debt. All right. <clears throat> they would not allow them in because it would change the politics of Australia. That is what's going on here. That's why you have open borders. They're here to basically overthrow <clears throat> um, the Republicans in every which possible way they can. All right. I mean, just look at what they're doing to Trump. I mean, <clears throat> the, the cases on the on the in New York and the taxes and you could do that to any any corporation in in New York, any of them. And say, oh well, you said your your building was worth two million. We think it was only worth one million, so that's fraud. But a bank has its own auditors. The yeah. bank lent that money based upon what the auditor said, not what a lender says. There, it never works a, that way. There's not a single fraud victim. There's not a single banker that said, "Oh wow, we got creamed." Nope. <laughs> no, they said, "No, we no. made money." That's Look, I was on a board of a bank. You know, back in the eighties, I I know how they work. Um, that that's it. I've I have a lot of various experiences throughout my life. So I've been there, done that, so many things. But it has given me insight into how things actually work. I mean, because I've done them. What could go wrong, and what is going wrong? Let's end on something positive. What is going wrong? What is, uh, they, the RICO case in Georgia looks like it's going to fall apart. I, I think it's going to go poof. You can't have this kind of corruption and then somebody step in and take over the corruption. Uh, but uh, what could go right for we the people? What could go wrong for the evil neocon deep stake weasels? What could go right for us? What could go wrong for them? If you might give us to well, end on a positive note. I, it's It's hard to say. Because I think even if Trump won, um, and assuming they don't assassinate him, um, then you have the deep state, you have the FBI, which has been behind a lot of this stuff. Um, you know, the NSA, they, they just want war. So I, I don't really know if Trump would actually be able to, to change anything. And I'm, I highly question whether or not they would, you know, kill him and, and blame it on a Mexican or something. Um, I mean, you know, they, they did that stuff with, you know, JFK because he didn't want to go to war. Well, they are afraid uh, so, of Trump. I mean, they, they believe he can do something. Uh, I knew it was a setup for 2020 because Trump, they were supposed to reach, uh, release the <clears throat> JFK papers. And they went to Trump and they said, oh, because of COVID, we need more time. Uh, and they asked for a postponement until after the election. Once they did that, I knew there was no way Trump was going to win. They were going to rig it. And as soon, that's exactly what they did. And then Biden comes in. Oh, okay, fine. We don't really want to release this. Yeah, okay, fine. You can hold it. Anything that can go right. What's going wrong for the? Let's do it too. What's going wrong for the deep state? They look like they're in a, a panic. Like they're just freaking out. Fannie Willis is going down. Jack Smith is having trouble. Uh, they're going to bring up Stormy Daniels was paid Trump three hundred thousand dollars. Going to bring that. Up. What is going wrong for the deep state in your estimation? Pretty much everything, because I think um, I was <clears throat> on a phone call uh, with Germany, uh, a client in Germany, and, he's, and it was a very interesting discussion because he said, you know, uh, even a year ago, if he mentioned some of this stuff, they thought he was a conspiracy theorist and, oh, you're crazy. He said, now everybody's talking about it. Because of the revelation of COVID, um, what, what's and all these talking about? Got, the, are you talking about the shots? It, that the confidence in government has collapsed. A new study came out in Europe and showed confidence in government is in Europe now is down to thirty percent. Um, he said 
things have changed. People I couldn't even remotely discuss anything like this with. Suddenly, everybody's like, yeah, what are they going to do with us now? Um, things are changing. So, so I, I don't... I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. Is that the same kind of... If you did the poll over here, would people in America say, would that mirror what's going on in Europe? Confidence in government has collapsed? Most likely. I mean, I think that's why our computer was coming up with over 60% for... Um, for Trump and, and 37, I think it was, on Biden. And there's only, <clears throat> you're talking about the only presidents that ever got 60% or higher was uh, FDR uh, on one election, Johnson after Kennedy assassination, which was probably a um, sympathy vote, and Richard Nixon when he said he was going to take us out of Vietnam. Other than those three, if you, I mean, you can Google, what did uh, Obama win by? I think it was 51.5%. And they stand up as if they're, <clears throat> this is a mandate. It's not a mandate. You're basically beating the, the hell out of, of the other side. Um, for what? I mean, these elections are so <clears throat> tight. They're, they're, it's never a landslide. Uh, for our computer to project a landslide like this, it, something is seriously wrong. Wow. Uh, and Mark saying Trump's going to get in because, you know, I am not sure they would ever allow him in. But they are certainly, they're trying to keep him off the ballots. They're trying to sue him in multiple jurisdictions. They have a felony cases against him for RICO. Meanwhile, Joe Biden isn't competent enough to stand trial uh, for the same type of document stuff. Probably way, way worse because I think it covers up his China and bribe connections and all this. But I digress. Oh. <laughs> this this report right here, The uh, we, I'm sorry, we only scratched the surface in an hour. Uh, you're a, uh, a deep... Uh, um, oops, over here, we're a deep writer for this. This is on your webpage at armstrongeconomics.com. I'll give you the webpage. A lot of free stuff on your webpage, too. But there's also this very deep and detailed report, the 2024 outlook, the year from political hell. We I didn't even co cover all the stuff that I wanted to. I just tried to hit the, a few of the high spots, and I appreciate you for that. But you also have a conference up in uh, May, at the end of May. Please come on before and give us a preview, and we'll... We'll link to your streaming and all that. People are very interested in what you have to say. This is a very uh, insightful look forward in 2024. There's so many variables. I know you can't say, you know, exactly this or this because Trump could win if they didn't, you know, try to rig it or they didn't try to do something awful, uh, violence to him. And I, I hope he's not assassinated. I don't really want to bring that up. But well, anyway. Alex uh, Soros put out that thing with the. Uh, a bullet hole through a pane of glass and forty-seven dollars. Where mean, is the Secret Service for arresting him? If I for that? did that for Biden with forty-eight, I think they'd be knocking my door down. Oh, you'd be in jail. I mean, that's awful. I, I, I wouldn't do that for Biden. I would never do that. I would never. I would never. I know you wouldn't either. But if you did, they'd be. They'd come after you. Well, absolutely. Awful. I mean, you can't do that kind of nonsense. And I mean, uh, right. I never well, did that with Ob with Obama. I never had the whole. I always was very careful about what cartoons I would use because they'd have him drawn like, you know, crazy stuff. And because I want to be respect, I just want to go after, you know, his policies. What are his policies? And so same thing as policies for Biden are awful and they look treasonous by letting all these people in. But anyway, I digress. Uh, Martin Armstrong, uh, your website, armstrongeconomics.com. You can get this and other publications on your website. I will link to uh, your website and the publications. Martin Armstrong, thanks for joining us today on usawatchdog.com. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's always a pleasure to see you, Greg. <laughs>